you know, all that ball movement in the second quarter, especially to close the half there. What do you think inspired that? What kind of things were you drilling in film that set up know, some of the two-man games, up fakes, other things you saw there? Just what we saw. Uh, we could have done better in game one. Uh, as I mentioned, shooting 53s. It's one thing, but a lot of them were contested, so we knew we had opportunities to drive closeouts and, you know, touch the paint a few times, and we knew if we did, did that, their defense would dissipate, and we get the looks we wanted, and so uh, that was the point of emphasis going into it, and I loved our aggressiveness and touching the paint, attacking, kicking out, and trying to get the right shots, and that was evident in the first half. A little more stagnant. What did you see after halftime there, especially in that third quarter? Yeah, it felt like, uh, it felt like we had really good shots that we were missing. Uh, some of our passes were, weren't as crisp. Uh, we... Threw up some plays, had some sets that we ran and would have had the right looks, but balls got tipped or they're a little off target. So it took us off our spots a little bit. But, um, you know, like the like the looks we were getting, uh, it just happened to miss some. I think there was a little bit of a lull in the game at times with, I don't know if it was all the replays and, you know, and the reviews and all that, but uh, credit them. They upped their intensity a little bit. They made an adjustment in the second half, uh, not closing out as hard. And we adjusted that and kind of got it back in the fourth quarter. He may more than match the physicality of Milwaukee, especially in that first half. Was that a point of emphasis as well over the last couple of days? Yeah, that was the thing that we really talked about in game one where you know, we've been a bigger physical team all year and uh, didn't love how we didn't react to them being physical, picking up full court and some of those things and took us out of our set. So uh, we, we adjusted well. We learned some things from game one and it felt like we knew we didn't we didn't react accordingly to the way they were playing. So uh, two big teams, but... We haven't kind of been out muscled like that all year. And I think our guys took, took pride in that, took that to heart. And we knew we would come out with the right effort tonight. How, how important were those uh, those mid-ranges to start the first quarter, especially Jalen getting getting three of those to fall? Yeah, that was another point. Uh, they obviously want to protect the paint. Uh, we shoot over 30% of our shots from mid-range. And on the season, only took 17% in game one. So we knew those were open. You don't have to over-penetrate and you know, drive into the bigs or, or take the three only. We have two really elite mid-range shooters, and we, we welcome those shots, especially when they're back in that drop. So talked to Jalen and Jason specifically about that. We wanted to set better screens and free them up, and we knew we'd have those looks, and they knocked them down. Jalen kind of had a, a rough game one, a lot of turnovers, inefficient shooting. Uh, what do you think were the keys for him bouncing back from that? And then how eager did you think he was to kind of respond after that performance? Yeah, his pride, you know, we knew he didn't have his best game. Marcus, Jason as well. Um, like I said, we were a little off kilter offensively for sure with them picking us up. So just to be aggressive, uh, free, free up some things. We saw some uh, things on film that we knew we could free up and get these guys good looks. Uh, first part being setting our guy up, uh, kind of taking away their ball pressure and then really setting screens and holding them tonight. We slipped out of way too many and guys were in their rear view contesting. And so we didn't get the clean looks that we wanted last game. But for Jalen, um, you know, he's a guy that's always going to bounce back and, and play well. He's traditionally done that when he's had a bad game. And so, um, you know, we expected that from him and Jason tonight. You mean, you, uh, you stuck with the seven-man rotation without Smart there. Was that the plan going in? Was that more gut feel by you? And also, um, you know, going to Grant very early in the first quarter there, obviously he gave you guys a huge game there. What, uh, what did you see out of him on both ends? I didn't hear the first part. Without who? Without Smart. You guys oh, went to the yeah. seven-man rotation. Yeah, I mean, uh, Daniel played a few minutes last game, and, and it was more so who they have in the game, rotation-wise, and what lineups we like. So we didn't go to that tonight. Um, flipped Grant to the three, so it took some, some of those minutes that Marcus was there, and obviously played Peyton, Peyton and Derek a lot more. But um, went to a bigger lineup, um, but really spun those, those three bigs instead of kind of going to Tice tonight. And, more so than anything, uh, you know, Derek and, and Peyton, we understand what they're going to do for us uh, on the defensive end. We don't lose a lot as far as that. It's hard to say with Marcus being defensive player of the year, but we don't lose anything schematically or coverage-wise with Derek and his size and versatility. So we went to a shorter rotation as far as that. Knew we had these three days off coming up and could play guys a little heavier minutes. Uh, two things. Uh, first off, how is Jalen's hammy? And was him coming out the end, was that just a strategic thing on Giannis at the rim, or was that his hammy? Yeah, he's, he's obviously, it may tighten up during games. Um, you know, he's, he's playing heavy minutes. And really, at the end of the game, we really wanted to get him out. He ran, uh, he only set out 245 of the third quarter. And then we brought him back in to start the quarter. And he ran that nine-minute stretch there. So um, being that we're up, you know, in the 16 to 18 range, we wanted to get him out. Uh, and, you know, we, we had a lot of stoppages, so we could run him a little longer. 
uh, due to the timeouts and due to the reviews and more so than anything was just getting them out because he ran a heavy amount in the second half. And you said you had made adjustments to the way they were closing you out in the second half. It seemed like a lot of the time when you would drive, you would then have someone relocate behind them, whether it was Al or Tatum. Was that the adjustment you guys were making? Yeah, part of it, uh, as, I, as I mentioned, multiple penetration, we wanted to get to the paint uh, as much as we can. You know, take the floater runner. We missed a lot of drop-offs and kickouts last game. And so that was a big part of it, not just settling for the contested three, but attacking certain guys closing out on the perimeter. We felt we let them off the hook, so to speak, with, with Lopez and some of those guys closing out hard. And tonight it was, it was different as far as attacking there. We got much easier shots, but yeah, that was a big point going into it. Hey, mate, could you sense uh, right after the game that, uh, that that game one, the way your team was going to come out in this one, did you feel it over the course of 24 to 48 hours right before the game, the way that they, they started? Yeah, I would say so. I think, you know, when you look at our record and who we've been over the last few months, uh, haven't lost two games in a row in a while or even uh, struggled the way we did offensively in that game. And so, you know, we talked about it and we, it was very evident on tape, the things that we kind of let them get away with. And physicality was one part of that. Uh, maybe the Brooklyn series not being as physical as a defensive-minded team. Uh, Caught us off guard a little bit, but, um, you know, we looked at it and we talked about being 32-8 and eight in the last 40 and not losing two games in a row, coming back with the proper effort off of losses. And uh, we expected our guys to respond like they did tonight. It, it seemed like Grant was, was frustrating Giannis early and then made, made some shots of his own. How much of a lift does him contributing that, that much give you guys in a, in a situation like that? Yeah, it's huge. Uh, you know, we... Talked about guarding him a little bit more one-on-one. We feel like we have the defensive guys to do it. Um, obviously, he came out extra aggressive in the second half, but to you know, score 28 on 27 shots, we were defending well initially. Um, and Grant's a big part of that. You know, his versatility, as I talk about, he's like the mini Al out there. We asked him to do the same things. And you know, we're, other guys are making plays. So his, his shot-making ability, obviously, he's been doing that all year, but uh, his versatility to be able to switch on the guards and guard him one-on-one -on -one in the post and you know, to, your, to your point, be physical and frustrate him to some extent is what we need with, with, with a player like that. And so uh, we got four guys we can, we feel comfortable throwing at him. At him. Um, Jalen Jason, bigger wings as well. So we can throw a lot of bodies and that's one of uh, Grant's main strengths is you know, guarding guys like that, him and Al. You, you mentioned a few times about the toughness and physicality. When you're, when you're watching, what are like the indicators to you that that's what's taking place, that the kind of the message received and, and that level of physicality has been increased yeah guarding the way we have been all year and even in game one we felt we were okay in the half court but we we're just sloppy and you know tra turnovers translate transition that we gave up uh, kind of helped them as far as that so we knew we could be good again in the half court it was more so uh, good offense and taking care of the ball but offensively I think us getting downhill attacking a little bit more you know the point is they have good rim protectors and they you know crowd the paint but it's not Will Chamberlain out there as guys we can get downhill and attack and and you know we got guys that can finish and so uh, still missed a few dump offs to Rob tonight, a uh, few dump offs to Al as well, but uh, obviously much better getting downhill and attacking Lopez tonight. Uh, Ime, uh, in terms of the fast start, I guess, what do you think that kind of did um, just for the team? Obviously, with Marcus out losing game one and, and coming out, I think it was like 15 to three um, when they took a timeout and everything. I didn't hear the first one. I'm sorry. Uh, just the fast start. What do you think? Oh, fast start. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, got us back on the right foot. Uh, we didn't like, love the way we came out last game, just in general, on both ends of the floor, um, and felt we could obviously play much better. And, you know, I wanted to match our physicality and, you know, I guess punch back first tonight. We talked about getting caught off guard a little bit and getting punched in the mouth last game. And the uh, big message was to show them who we are and who we've been all year and respond to losses in a certain way, and we did that. I mean, what were those film sessions like over the last couple of days? Were they reacting as, with as much shock and disappointment as you were? Were you jumping them a little bit? What was it like when you were looking at the plays that they didn't make? You know, it was more optimistic than anything, honestly, because we did guard well um, initially. And, you know, we're holding them to 9 to 20 for, for, for 25 last game, and 28 points on 27 shots tonight. So we know we have the bodies to do it. I think uh, some of our rotations weren't as sharp or our double teaming you know, unnecessarily with certain personnel on them. So we were op optimistic we could duplicate that. And then offensively, we knew we could be night and day better as far as that and getting out in transition, just the ball movement, not settling for as many threes and attacking the paint. So uh, guys saw it. It was pretty evident. Some of the open passes we missed, you know, Rob is a, a lob threat and we missed him at the rim several times to kind of loosen up Lopez and those guys. And so 
we all felt good about where we would be if we came out with the proper mindset and respect level and kind of did that tonight. Thank you.